to another edition of Telescope Man. Today we're over here at uh, Tom Nose Telescope Factory in Wiley, Texas, having another amateur telescope making meeting in April of 2012. And what you're looking at right now is one of the Texas Astronomical Society member owned telescopes and you've got uh, a task member and uh, board of directors person Gary Carter right here standing next to the scope kind of give you a little idea of the size of it it's about seven feet long and I'm gonna walk up here to Gary and he's gonna give us a kind of a description of this scope now well, you saw this scope originally when we had it out here at Tom's shop when it was uh, in its original condition retrieved off the club floor up at Toka, and we've taken it down and had a, a fellow paint it with some nice white enamel and we've replaced the original Unitron focuser with a nice two-speed moonlight focuser and today we're putting it through its paces taking a look at the Sun with a, a Beta Herschel wedge on the back of it so it's it's a maiden voyage it's now fully restored and uh, we're ready to take a look at what it's going to take to, to get a mount set up for it up at the, the Atoka site and uh, we've had a very kind member donate a nice mount for it and we'll hear a little more about that later yep. so uh, you'll see this at some of our uh, our uh, public outreach I'm going to try and get out to Spring Park next week with uh, Hugh Stevens and uh, put it through his paces out there mighty good why don't you show us this uh fancy cell it, that's in the front of this sure. telescope so, this is really what makes it a kind of a unique scope yeah. we've showed this to you before but Gary will give you a little talk about this particular lens cell right here so uh, uh, using some pictures I uh, uh, traced down some very similar cells to this that are made by the Brashear optical company back in the uh, late 1800s early 1900s and uh, Brashear hired an optician by the name of Hastings and the Hastings lens designs are constructed flint forward and when I took this uh, lens cell apart to clean the uh, optics I discovered this was in fact a flint forward design so it's uh, definitely a copy of a Hastings uh, uh, Brashear type of design if not an original Brashear itself so it's a very fine piece, uh, star test quite well. We're doing a little more work on it to get the optics to line up uh, properly. But uh, right now I'm, I'm pretty pleased with what I'm seeing through this scope. Yeah. Very nice piece. It's great. And uh, we had a wonderful member uh, donate to the Society an astrophysics mount. That will be the mount for this scope. And of course we're gonna put it up at our dark site in Atoka, Oklahoma for the use of the membership. So should be a great addition to the dark site and one more telescope that the members can use uh, when they go up to Atoka to see the night sky. Okay, here we are again in uh, Tom Noe's famous telescope shop. There's Tom Noe, Gary Carter over there. I'll give you a little view of his shop here. There's Glenn. Yeah, Dale, <laughs> and as you can see, he's got a very neat shop with all kinds of nice equipment that he uses to make telescopes. And you know, here's a few of his Maricels that he's manufactured right there for the teleport telescope which there's one he's working on right now in the shop a teleport telescope and of course these are all handmade have Zambuto mirrors in them very nice scope I believe Tom told us he's on his last scopes that he's going to manufacture before he retires and I think he has seven scopes that he's going to build and then he's going to return. And this is a uh, criterion mount from the 1960s is what it originally was. A criterion mount from the 1960s. Looks plenty good now. 
He can stop doing the six. Build a uh, just a model. This is the same size tube as this is. This is uh, uh, it's got holes where I mounted the uh, uh, primary mirror right here. So what I wanted was I wanted the exact dimension from where the primary mirror screws were and where the uh, secondary was. Mm -hmm. And then from that I could put this. And uh, so it worked on this one and I moved it back and forth. I got it within about an inch and I just moved it back and forth and just put a, a measuring stick there and, then the, and uh, put the clamps on the outside, not the inside. But it's easier, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's easier to, to move like this. <laughs> So you know, it, to use what Dale like is describing is, is uh, how to figure it's out what the thing, focal length the question, of your you telescope to where to put the needs hole. to be yeah. manually yeah. 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 just by moving yeah. things around on a mock-up of the scope until you get the exact measurement and then you do that to the real tube and your focal length will come out perfect within the focuser that you mount on there. So he's built this really little uh, jig type because, device because you, you want to where that basically matches the well, tube that well, he's going to, to use yeah. you want it down to and he's using that to figure out the focal length of that particular mirror and the focuser that he's going to use manually. No calculations yeah. needed. It either comes the focus or it doesn't. Travel from the absolute minimal of the focus. Oh, Pretty neat. It's uh, it's uh, well, there's a, it's uh, it's uh, two coats uh, of Helmsman, which is a, a clear sealer, very thick, very easy to work with. Seems to work well with cardboard. I never put it on cardboard before. And the same two coats of Helmsman with a coat of uh, flat black, and, and this is a coat of uh, a white lacquer. Huh. And lacquer. Lacquer. White. Really? White spray lacquer. And that's what oh, you're going to. I've used it before, and it looks really good. And know? that's what yeah. you're going to put on this tube. That's gonna, what I'm going to put on here. Well, interior and, and exterior. This is two tubes that are glued together, and they're glued on the inside. It's quite strong, but just for cosmetic, I'm going to build a little collar to fit on, on, on it here and to add strength to it. So if it ever gets run over by a truck, then it's going to be. <laughs> yeah, but won't that interfere with <laughs> your ability to slide the tube back and forth in the rings a little bit for balancing? Yeah, I checked it, and we're we're right on. So a different yeah, but after you put all this stuff on it, it may, <laughs> it may change a little. Well, the, the, the finish is going to go on both ends. Oh yeah, but can you get it the same on both ends? It's going to be close <laughs> enough. <laughs> I think it's going to be close enough. It's just yeah. going to be small, and you'll be able to move it three or four inches, and it, it came out right in the middle. Right in the middle. Probably, okay. with, with, a, with, a, with a standard head hex eyepiece in here and and the didn't put a finder on but the, the new finders are are, are, are going to be fine I'm not planning on putting on a, an antique finder if I put an antique finder on then it's going to throw it off and and, and and I don't know what do you think is somebody going to want to put one on I don't, I don't know exactly what we're going to use it for yeah I don't know I mean, they're not, not too hard to find. You can still find a finder. Pretty light. You know, like, I don't no, no, I'm talking about the ones that came with this oh, 1960 the, scope. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, that's so this is the one you're restoring. This is the one that's being restored now. The, it, it showed up without uh, uh, without a tube uh -huh. and a sack. Uh, it was a sack of scope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sack of parts. That's exactly parts. what it was. That's what it was advertised as. It was, uh, it was no tube. If you remember yeah, from the, right. some of the past videos, it, yeah. this was just uh, donated to us. And it was simply a sack of parts like the spider and the mirror cell and the mirror. And this mount did not look like this before uh, Glenn Fitzgerald got a hold of it. But the clock drive does work. So here shortly we're going to have a nice tube all painted up. That color right there that Dale was showing. And we're going to mount that on this. Uh, so here they are a, mounting a that tube onto that Criterion mount no, from the 1960s. 
And Dale, of course, has uh, got the tube and has uh, mounted the focuser that we were donated and the mirror cell in the mirror and the spider, of course, in the secondary. And now all he needs to do with it is to paint it up. And we'll have a very nice restored scope from the 1960s. Should look really neat. Pretty neat project. Almost completed now. And put it oh, back in, it the and then I found that this center bolt was, was bent. So when I took it, I took it out, and then I bent it back, and then I cleaned the threads out, put it back together again, and then these bolts on the inside—they're American. It's just a standard quarter twenty thread, but they're—I think they're set at a thirty-second because I didn't have a wrench that would fit it. <laughs> <laughs> but a metric number ten does. So well, yeah. Uh, so the metric ten fits the quarter twenty. No, that, that <laughs> makes sense. That's what I figured. So uh, anyway, it should be in collimation still if it uh, uh, if it was uh, you know didn't get bounced around too much. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Right there. And I I didn't uh, put a I didn't put a a, a, a donut on it yet. So uh, okay, Glenn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want, I want you to uh, do the honors here of uh, taking a look here so that you can see. Because Glenn had one of these scopes a long time ago. A long time ago. That uh, he no longer has. And he just finished, you know, getting the uh, getting getting the mount redone. He, I, don't, I don't think you did it, but you you, you got something to do it. You want to call it? Are you okay with it? Just it's it's okay. It's, it, it is visually collimated, and there isn't a donut on the bottom. And so there's the mir mirror the cell mirror. right there, so, so you can get a look at that. Mirror, it's it's only a six-inch <laughs> mirror, and it's a uh, it, like it's, it's a very long focal length too. So for a six-inch, so uh, yeah, I think it'll be okay visually. Yeah, it's about F8. Yeah, it's a at 8.3. It says. So what does it look like, Glenn? You can see that tree real clear. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Is this, does it have a lot to it so you can walk away?